when you study energy, or at least when you get introduced into energy in the foundation of physics class, so probably grade 11 or somewhere around there, it is worth mentioning that there are numerous types of energies. Now, I actually really like the summary. There's like a little table summary, okay, in the book that I'm pointing out over there. So, you know, thank you to, um, you know, physics uh, for grade 11. And this was actually in chapter and section 5.3. So they nicely summarize this and I'm going to try to go over all of these items with you. So when you're getting into energy, you know, one of the most common ones that you will learn about is in terms of foundations is mechanical energy. So that's going to be one of the items that you will have. Now, this mechanical energy is going to be kind of the summation of two types of energy, which is going to be kinetic energy and then gravitational potential energy. So those are the two that you see there. Now, my goal isn't to necessarily define these for you, but to give you a sense of, you know, where this energy would have been kind of arising, okay? So kinetic energy, when you're studying it, it is primarily caused by forces with regards to friction and gravity. So those are the two that are causing some kind of motion, okay, within, and therefore we can calculate what the kinetic energy um, is. Now I can put up a link up above there to kinetic energy to get you started if you wanna find out more. Gravitational potential energy on the other hand is really just simply to do with gravity forces. So that is on Earth, which is primarily what you're gonna be studying, but it's also anywhere in the universe. So anytime that you're talking about gravitational uh, forces, they are gonna be leading to possible potential energy that you will have Okay, with regards to energy. So I'm gonna put up a link up above there to the gravitational potential energies. Now those two, okay, are gonna be combining into mechanical energy. And that is kind of the core key concept which you study in foundational um, physics. Now this doesn't mean that you shouldn't be introduced to others, you know, so you may be introduced to others, okay, um, and types of energies. So here is another one, which is thermal energy. So with regards to thermal energy, so with regards to this, what you will have is that thermal energy is sometimes, I mean, it's, it's an error that it's called this way, uh, but not necessarily. I mean, I sometimes refer to this way as well, which is kind of heat energies, but heat is something very specific. So thermal energy is much better term. And that is primarily contained by randomly moving atoms and molecules. So the key word here is that it's gonna be with regards to some random motion with regards to any atoms and molecules. And you can think about, you know, for your gases, you know, for a liquid or for a solid. So they are made up of atoms and molecules. And now the question is, you know, how are they moving? And if they are gonna be moving okay, around there, then typically those motions are gonna be related towards thermal energies. So that's just kind of an overview so that you think about when someone mentions thermal energy, you can think about these actual atoms and molecules moving okay, randomly in various states, so gas, liquid, or solid. So the next one that you may run into, okay, so if you're lucky enough, or at least you're going to get introduced to it, okay, in some small way is going to be nuclear energy. Um, so nuclear energy, and very often it's sometimes referred to as atomic energy, okay, because it is with regards to the atomic scale. So it's very, very tiny. And you really are just talking about, okay, the energy which is contained in the protons and the neutrons in atomic nuclei. So in the nucleus themselves, okay, so as you know, as you kind of start breaking things down, you'll have electrons and then centrally you have your protons and neutrons as you're going to be studying in your chemistry classes. Um, and therefore the energy that's contained within there, which is actually quite, quite a bit of energy that you will have because the forces there are pretty enormous to be able to break them down so you can release this energy and then do something with it. So that is nuclear energy. And then you can shift over okay, to radiant energy, okay? So now radiant energy, um, a very nice way to think about it is in terms of light energy. So if you're thinking about the sun, you know, or you're thinking about any form of light, okay, that you have, so this radiant energy is really contained by the oscillations that are caused by the electric and magnetic fields. And now, of course, when you're just studying, you're gonna be like, mm, I have no idea what an electric or magnetic field is. 
Okay, you maybe have a sense of a gravitational field. Well, you can think of it kind of in the same way, okay, in terms of the field itself, but it has something to do with, okay, electricity, okay, or electrons, okay, or mag uh, magnetism, okay, or the magnetic, okay, items itself, and something to do with oscillating. Um, and very often uh, you will find, okay, as you keep moving, this is actually referred to the electromagnetic radiation. So the word radiation, okay, or radiant, notice, okay, those are two kind of similar items, and that is, okay, everything to do with oscillations of the electric and magnetic fields, okay? And again, you can think about the light which is coming in from the actual sun, while it has to transfer its energy in some way, okay, because of all of the different explosions, which is really kind of your nuclear energy, nuclear reactions that are happening on the sun, okay, those get transferred back into, okay, kind of radiation, or electromagnetic radiation, we think of it sometimes as light, but it's not always visible light, okay, so there's other forms, okay, of that as well, and that does carry energy, okay, through the uh, oscillations and the electric and magnetic fields, okay. So now shifting, okay, throughout, okay, is electrical energy. And this kind of comes with regards to two forms that we can think about this. So, you know, you can think about kind of potential energy, which is kind of stored items. And this is static electricity. And the word static means that it's kind of not moving. So it's contained by the accumulation, okay, of static charges. And again, you might not know, okay, what are these charges? Well, you can think of them as kind of like electrons that you have if you've studied anything to do with an atom itself. So what happens, okay, and how are they accumulating, right? And they're static. So that means that it's kind of left over in potential. And if they're allowed to shift over and move, well, then you're going to get into kind of current, okay, electricity. And the word current typically means and is related to moving charges or moving electrons that you may have. And so that is kind of related back into electrical energy, which we certainly do use anytime you plug in anything into the outlet, you're allowing electrons to flow. And as they're flowing, that is the moving charges. And if they're going to be flowing, they're going to be carrying energy. And then we can use that energy for something else. So again, you can have an energy transfer. Now, one item and one of the reasons if, if you are lucky enough, okay, Okay, or fortunate enough, so you may experience sound energies. So those particular sound energies are related to the fact that you can take a large group okay, of atoms and molecules and they can oscillate in a pattern. So this is a little bit different because they do create some kind of a pattern. Okay, and what we do is we force out okay, these atoms and molecules in a particular way. So even as I'm speaking and communicating with you, okay, if you're lucky again enough to hear, you will experience that you have this sound energy and it can transfer on, but it does actually happen through atoms and molecules. Okay, so this is different than, for example, electrical energy or radiant energy that you have. Um, now, moving further, so there's a couple of other two items in terms of energies. One is elastic energy, okay, and this one is typically contained within materials that you can, okay, or can be stretched twisted, compressed, and then they typically will return back to its original shape in some way. So that has something to do with, you know, even rubber elastics, you have one, something of that nature. And then you also can have springs, right? So those springs can get kind of stretched out, twisted, compressed, okay? and then they can release, so they can go back and forth. So that is elastic energy. And that has something to do obviously with the actual kind of bonds that allow it to be stretched out. And obviously, okay, they want to be able to pull, be able to be pulled back in. Okay, lastly, chemical energy. And this one, as you can see there, so chemical energy is very interesting because of the fact that it is contained within internal bonds of molecules. So if you do have those bonds, okay, within, so you have, Okay, various, you know, for example, uh, items that are connected in together. So you're talking about from atoms and then they start to create bonds. Okay, so some attraction forces okay, that are happening within them and those internal bonds can carry energy. And though that energy, okay, sometimes is called bond energy because of the bonds that are created. And this happens, of course, in food. 
So in terms of that's how we utilize it, we want to try to get into those internal bonds, break them down, use that energy for something else. You can think of fuel energy, and this is you know still your fossil fuels, for example, maybe like gasoline that we do utilize so that we can actually get our vehicles to move okay, or, um, in any form or fashion but they're also utilized for something else, sometimes for heating, you know, you may also do that in your furnace. So those are fuel energies and those are coming from internal bonds and hence, okay, the word internal, okay, so internal energy within there, okay, and sometimes they might be referred to as molecular energy, all right? So all of these are wonderful energies to get exposed to. You know, I was thinking, you know, should I put this up or not for a foundational, kind of physics course, but I think it's worthwhile to get exposed to all of these, you know, so that you can run into and do a little bit of a check mark and say, okay, you know what, I understand now that there are so many different ways that energy, okay, can be stored up. And therefore, okay, within these energies, obviously, you can start to transfer these energies all over. Mechanical energy, kinetic energy, gravitational energy, and hopefully, you know, some kind of thermal energy discussions you will hear in your foundational courses. The other ones you may not run into as much, just depends on how much physics you're going to get into. All right. Now, with regards to transfer, you know, you can think about these in terms of this way, you know, so for example, I've mentioned, you know, radiant energy, which is kind of released, let's imagine, you know, at the sun, Okay, as it is creating, so it has nuclear reactions that are happening on the sun. So that is happening within, you know, these protons and neutrons. Okay, so they're firing off and then that energy gets transferred. You can think about in terms of radiant energy or light energy, you know, then it travels all along the way. Obviously, it hits our earth. Now, what is pretty interesting is, you know, within about two minutes, okay, of the energy which is sent out from the sun onto our earth, you know, we can pretty much... Um, you know, utilize that energy for a whole year if we could obviously store it somewhere or somehow use it. So within here, um, that radiant energy, then it kind of hits back in, you know, as you know. Um, so our plants, okay, are capable of utilizing and transferring that radiant energy then into creating chemical, okay? So this would be a chemical energy then creating it and building it up in terms of internal bonds that are stored. So for example, within our sugars, okay, and those actual bonds then, okay, are eaten. So those are food energies. And again, they can be transferred on. That food energy can be utilized, okay, within so that we can use it within our muscles. Then we're back to mechanical energy in terms of moving things around. So you can see that this transfer of energy continuously happens between different forms. All right, so that is it for this video. I hope that this was introduced you to various types of energies and kind of reminded you that energy does transfer from one form to another. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.